Hello Internet, James Allen from Out of 8, and today I'm playing turn-based grand strategy game to end all wars. It's Ajod's current attempt at simulating World War I. Game features a couple of scenarios. It has a short uh, campaign of low complexity, has a tutorial, and then it has uh, two main campaigns, one with a historical start, and one where you can pick war plans for each of the nations that you are controlling. A uh, pretty disappointingly limited selection of scenarios. Uh, they are planning on adding some additional things later on after release, uh, but obviously you can't show that off right now. So I'm just going to do the historical campaign and play as the West. Your goal is to accumulate victory points and then, uh, you know, defeat your enemies. So we'll start this and away we go. All right, here we are at the uh, main map screen. Uh, the interface will appear to be very familiar to anybody who's played an AJAW game in the past. It's the same engine, uh, which honestly is looking quite dated now. Um, I'll show why in a little bit. Game has slow re turn resolution. It's not as bad as Pride of Nations, which was simulating a whole bunch of different things, uh, but it still takes a couple minutes to resolve a turn. Luckily for you, uh, when I record the videos, it kind of cuts out a lot of the load times, uh, so you won't have to sit and uh, see things like that and, you know, just stare at the screen like I have to do. Uh, as with other titles, units are organized in these stacks. Each stack has a bunch of different units, which are actually an arrangement of several units, depending on, uh, you know, what's in there for the divisions. And then you can have several different classes of things in the same area. Uh, the game has early airplanes that are used for scouting. And your basic objective is to just go around and take over stuff. Game has diplomacy, which, uh, as I mentioned earlier with the interface, is in this odd corner of the map where you actually have to place diplomats. Uh, so here's your diplomats. So you can place them to kind of try to get these nations into your side. So I have uh, one for these. I'll send them to the U.S. And then four of these guys that I can send to minor nations. Uh, so we'll try Holland and Denmark. And who's going to be useful? Uh, Switzerland. And never. Let's do Greece. There we go. Uh, then you can do other decisions and stuff on this part of the map or not. So since I'm controlling the Western nations, uh, you know, it's basically France and England. So I don't have that much to worry about. If you're the Central Powers, you're fighting on both fronts. And then if you're the Eastern Powers, you're basically Russia uh, and whoever ends up spawning over there. You do start out in control of Belgium, but they're going to get rolled here pretty quick. A lot of these units, you can't even move the first turn. Uh, when your France kind of simulate the attacks by the central powers in the beginning of the game. Except for that guy. I can move him. If I so choose, which I probably will. Alright, so, uh, you can order some units. So here's your military recruitment. You can filter these according to the nation. You know, so here's France and then it highlights in green where you can put those. Uh, so let's see. A lot of different units here. Shows the relative strengths of those. Here's some infantry divisions that might prove to be useful so I'll probably do some of those and that's about it that's all I have money for the first turn it's just that one you also have the little atlas of all your units across the globe you know you not only have to worry about Europe but there's also off map areas here around the Pacific in Africa so you'll have some colonial battles And also in the ocean where you can send your naval units uh, to blockade enemy trade. Uh, which is actually probably what I'll do here. So let me go back to that atlas. Let's do, let's hide all these guys and get my navels up. So there's my battle cruisers up in Scotland. So I think I'm going to try to protect this shipping here. So I will move him here. There we go. So, you know, it's they move and do this weird shipping box stuff. It's kind of, you know, again, they kind of need to change the map a little bit and the map mechanics around. Uh, there's my West Indies fleet kind of protecting out here. And 
a little Tunisia thing. Um, let's do it by power value. There's my grand fleet. That's what I was looking for. So up there, so I might try to blockade. Or I might send them over here and see what happens. So let me drag them. So you just drag and drop. So I'm going to send them over here and see where they're at in 12 days. And then I did that. So, well, actually, no, the channel fleet. Probably send them out in the channel. Right there. All right. Uh, you do have to worry about transporting things from England to France using transport fleets. I'm not really going to worry about that uh, initially, especially because most of the first turn you're just kind of sitting and waiting to see where the Central Powers end up sending all their units. So there really isn't that much more to do uh, the first turn. You have to worry about supplies. So here's the owner of the regions. Uh, you know, your strategic objectives. Um, and supplies on here somewhere. Weather. So stuff like that. I'll turn that off. So let's uh, run the first turn and see what happens. All right, so here is kind of the new feature of uh, to end all wars. It's this battle planner. So what you can do is you can prepare a deployment, you know, basically anywhere between balanced and withdraw. Uh, so you can see with my estimated power, I'm not really great, so I'm actually going to try to withdraw here. And then you can select a battle plan from that withdrawal. Withdrawal. Um, so I'll just pick hit defend escape route. And then we'll see how poorly I do. Not surprising, Belgian defeat. really don't need those. All right, so a good three and a half to four minutes later, uh, done with one turn. You know, and the game's like a hundred turns, so that's, you know, you're going to be spending 500 minutes uh, simply sitting here, you know, waiting for the turns to resolve. And you can't just get up and leave because of the new battle plans, which you can turn off if you want. Uh, you know, the battle plans could happen and then uh, you'll be totally screwed. Uh, you know, Having it sit there for a little bit. I'm going to send this guy up to Lille. And you can... There's all these different uh, orders here. I'm going to have him enter the structure. I'm just going to sit there. Alright, now basically everybody's ready to go and unlocked. So, let's see what I want to do. I'm going to pull this guy up. Try to get him in there. Move you Actually, let me undo that. I can group some of these people together. So each leader, depending on their ranking, uh, has a bunch of command points that they can have, which basically determines how many units they can have. Uh, so I can attach 
probably at least a couple of these cores on there. 39. There we go, that's your limit. So, he's still not great. I mean, that's he's basically half the size of that, but... I'm going to try to have him dig in there on the border. Uh, and I'm going to have this reserve come up. Uh, and then I can use rail movement to get him there faster. Instead of 21 days, now it's 3 days, so that's way faster. Uh, then I'm going to spend some cash on some new troops. You know, basically you're... Uh, you know, as France and associated Western powers, uh, you're at a real numbers disadvantage to begin with. They have superior, you know, number of troops. So it's, early game is just really a matter of just kind of delaying them enough to get all your troops built up. Uh, so I do have a pretty good amount of cash that I can spend, so that's nice. So I got that going for me, which is nice. So again, they, I don't like this, having a scroll all along the bottom. They should just give you a big giant list. Uh, so let's see, what do I actually want to get? Can I get our artillery guy? Sure. I think I can get one of those in Paris too. Alright. Engineer Brigade. there and then you can eventually you know group all these people in there cavalry divisions uh, I really want infantry put some down here Early on can support a lot. And it takes some turns for them to, and that's basically almost all the money I have. Put one there. Uh, you know, if you click on them, you know, they have like no strength. And it takes about three, yeah, 58 days. Uh, so each turn is two weeks. So, you know, that'll take four turns for them to come around. So you really have to kind of plan in the future to get them. Uh, ready to go. And there's really nothing you can do with them until they're done. So. 2047. I'm not going to group you in. 32. 44. There you go. And then we'll have this other core there. Alright. So, you know, basically you're just kind of sitting and waiting. Uh, and seeing where the AI ends up going. The AI is uh, decent uh, for how relatively complex and large scale the game is. My naval units are chugging along. There they go. Got two days to the bite. I don't think I want to go to uh, sea mines there. Actually, probably... I just have you sit off. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, so you can't go because they're neutral. All right, well, we'll just kind of park you over there, I guess. Are you in that box yet? No, you are. All right, well, let's, uh, offensive. So we'll try to get that central power guy out if I put him on offensive posture. Alright. Uh, I think that's kind of it. You don't really have any more diplomacy stuff to do. Eventually, you'll be able to do research, uh, but it's not until way late in the game. You know, it increases your percentage here. Uh, and then you can unlock more stuff or bonuses for existing units. And again, it's just kind of thrown up in the in the middle of Russia. Which makes sense to me. So, in Soviet Russia, research is done in Siberia. So, alright, let's run this turn. Another four minutes.
Hey, won a naval battle. That's exciting. I'm just going to try to retreat from here. Yeah, half a million troops versus 50,000. Don't think that's going to go too well. at my colonies now, are you? Alright, new turn. I don't know why it still throws up the tutorial messages. Uh, so they're marching hard through the forest, that's for sure. Which, you know, this is not great. So two days, I've got to come racing him there, basically. Uh, this is interesting, though, that they kind of left this open. So I actually think I'm going to march up uh, and try to grab this. Why not? Five days. Yeah, rail doesn't even matter, I don't think. Yeah. All right, so we'll keep the sixth core behind, and I'm just gonna kind of shuffle everybody up. I think. Well, yeah, I'll keep him there. I'll shuffle him up. Got Twelve, two twelves. I can come on. All right, then we'll move you up to here and have you enter. And then we'll move you up here and have you enter. This is okay too, I just need more troops. And the same thing, 12 out of 24. So I can kind of double up there. Oh, that's basically it. So I might move a couple of these guys up. Oh, he can, he can have way more troops. Alright, let me do that then. I actually do want to combine you. Seven days is fine. So that'll be 24. Uh, that'll put me actually over by one. And we'll just keep this other guy in here. All right. So good job, boat guy. Actually, he might have you go hunt them down. I have some transports in there, too. That's where my transports are. You haven't found them yet, have you? All right. Africa's a little concerning about losing that battle here. They kind of took over my colony, but what are you going to do? All right, I think I'm going to do one more turn. The so turns take so long to resolve. Uh, and then we'll just see what happens after the end of this turn. Uh, let me queue up some troops if I can. I don't really want any ships at this point. Uh, infantry divisions in south. Or roll. Try that. Sherborg. Yeah, just kind of move all these guys down here, and then I would train them, you know, use rail movement to get them up to the front lines. So basically each city has a limit on how many troops that they can produce, obviously, because got to get the men from somewhere. And then there's also a limit on how many of a single type of unit you can do. Alright, I think 
That's about it. Yep, 24. You know, basically, spend all your money early goings just to get troops, troops, troops up and then move them to the front line. So, Alright, we'll end this turn and then we'll just see what happens. How many battles or anything. It's not going to end well. Uh, ooh, actually have a numbers advantage. Well, let's uh, get them with a wave infantry charge. Yeah, suck it, Germans. Ah, oh, that was close though, I think. Uh, all right. Oh uh, yeah, this is here. Well, let's do it. Let's do flanks. Hey. Vive la France! Let's just try a balanced deployment. Yeah, that was not going to end well. Alright, well there we go. Uh, there's all my messages down here. You can filter them by battles and all sorts of detail and stuff. Um, so that is to end all wars. I think that's a pretty decent look at it. You know, if you've ever played any of the Ajog games, you know exactly what to expect and this is exactly what you would expect. I think that the engine works better in smaller scenarios, so it's kind of disappointing that there's only one smaller scenario in the game. I mean, it's, it's kind of just tedious to wait three, four minutes between turns for all the, you know, detailed calculations to get done. You know, there is a lot of detail in the game. Uh, you know, all the research that went into getting all these actual generals and all the actual units placed around the map. And a lot of stuff happening under the hood to calculate the outcomes of all the uh, battles that are going on. So, you know, it's clearly got a lot of depth in that sense. Uh, just the engine's getting kind of old and kind of outdated. And I don't think it, 
like I said, handles this large of an engagement uh, as well as some of the smaller ones. Um, you know, it has all the hallmarks of AJOD titles. It has play by email, uh, all the, you know, weather effects and supply and building units. And uh, even though it's done a little oddly, all the diplomacy and off map stuff happening in Africa and around the Pacific. So, and the AI seems to be pretty competent, although it takes a while to kind of figure out what it's going to do. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things that you know what you're going to get. And if you like, you know, the series of titles by this developer, then I think you'll like this one. And if you don't care for it, then you won't care for this one either. So that's all I have for today. Till next time. Bye now.